Hello Crawshaw and welcome to another edition of Remote Learning in Physics. The rules are the same as always, so let's begin with our starter questions and retrieval. Number one, what is the overall charge of an atom? Number two, compare the atomic radius to the radius of a nucleus. Which one's bigger, which one's smaller and how much? Number three, what does the symbol G represent? And number four, what is the unit of density? Pause the video to give yourself thinking time and time to record your answers and play when you're ready to check. So looking at those answers, overall atoms have zero charge. They are neutral because there is an equal number of positive protons and negative electrons. Compared with the nucleus, the radius of the nucleus is less than one ten thousandth of an atomic radius. So the atomic radius is over 10,000 times greater than the nucleus, the nuclear radius. G represents gravitational field strength, which is measured in newtons per kilogram. And the unit of density is kilograms per meter cubed. A few links to physics here. So fans of The Simpsons or Star Wars may notice that, that is an ion cannon on the left and that the baseball team in The Simpsons are the Springfield isotopes. Both terms we'll encounter today. Another question we'll look at today is how, or indeed can we, turn lead to gold? Alchemy. Something that's puzzled many scientists for thousands of years. Before that, a little review of what you did last time. Pause the video and check your understanding of what is in an atom and how heavy it is. I've colour coded the answers so you can see them. So we've got protons, neutrons and electrons. Protons are positive, neutrons are neutral and electrons are negative. The relative mass, protons and neutrons, both have a relative mass of one and electrons have a relative mass of approximately zero, not exactly zero. The overall charge is nothing. The mass of this particular atom is seven because there are seven protons and neutrons. In today's lesson, we will look at ions and isotopes, giving definitions for some key terms, describing the formation of positive ions, and looking at what makes isotopes different from each other in terms of a few features. We will be using what's called AZX notation in lessons in physics and in chemistry, where A is the mass number, Z is the atomic number, which is the number of protons, and X represents the chemical symbol for an element. So if we look at lithium, 7,3, we have a few things to look at. Lithium itself has the symbol Li. The second letter is always lowercase. The smaller of the two numbers is the atomic number. And the larger one is the mass number, which is the sum of the protons and neutrons in an atom. To work out the number of neutrons, we subtract the atomic number from the mass number. So for lithium, that would give us a value of, you guessed it, four. So three plus four gives us seven, three protons and four neutrons. Here are some isotopes of hydrogen. What is the same about each one? What's different? Use your answers to write a definition for an isotope. So what is different in each one? What is the same? 
We'll come back to that in a moment. Again, what is the difference between isotopes of hydrogen? Here's another diagram showing the same thing. And hopefully you realize that the difference, the key difference is the number of neutrons. These, all three of these isotopes are still hydrogen. They are still hydrogen because each one has one proton. It's that proton number that determines which element you belong to. So as long as you've got just the one, you can be an isotope of hydrogen. Here are two carbon atoms. Let's play a spot the difference. Both of these represent carbon, but something is different. Aha. So we have a 12 and a 14. The difference is that mass number. What makes the mass number different? Can you remember how we get the mass number and the atomic number and the difference between the two? Well, let's work out the number of protons and neutrons in each one. Pause while you try it and then play when you want to see the answers. So carbon 12, we always call isotopes by the number, the mass number. So first is carbon 12, the second will be called carbon 14. Carbon 12 has six protons and six neutrons. Carbon 14, because it's carbon, has six protons, but a total of eight neutrons this time. You can always the difference between the mass number and the atomic number. And notice that in both cases, they each have six electrons. There's always the same number of protons as there are electrons. So the definition you should have written a few slides back is that isotopes are atoms of the same element with the same number of protons and a different number of neutrons, sometimes more, sometimes less. And we should note is it relevant to later lessons that some isotopes are unstable and a bit radioactive. So here's a little task for you to practice them. For each of the isotopes shown, calculate the number of protons and neutrons and electrons using the techniques we've shown previously. Pause the video while you try it and play when you want to see the answer. So hopefully you can see there that the difference between two numbers gives us the number of neutrons. And an interesting observation is that hydrogen one has no neutrons at all. It's basically just a proton. And in an atom of hydrogen, there's just one electron floating around it, orbiting around it to give it the proper terminology not floating. Right, next slide. Again, here are some more um, isotopes for you to practice. For each one, can you work out the name from your periodic table in your planner? From the numbers there work, um, read off the atomic mass, atomic number, and then calculate how many protons, neutrons, and electrons are present in each one. We've done beryllium on the right there, BE, um, as an example. So if you pass paper questions, what is an isotope? And can you work out protons and neutrons for these two atoms, or certainly speaking, isotopes of beryllium? Isotopes, again, are atoms of an element with the same number of protons and a different number of neutrons, and therefore a different mass number, you might add. Beryllium has four protons, four electrons, and seven neutrons. Beryllium-9 
has four protons, four neutrons, and five. There are four protons, four electrons, and five neutrons. We mentioned a few minutes ago about the idea of turning lead into gold. Can it be done? Well, technically, if you could get rid of those extra three protons, then lead would become gold. Can we do it? Perhaps. It might be very radioactive. But that's another story. So in this picture, there is one atom and two ions. So thinking about what is the difference between each of the pictures, which one represents the atom, and which ones will be negative or positive ions. And some of you may have done this already in your chemistry lessons, and this is revision. For others, it's a brand new concept. So let's take a look together. So the difference between the three diagrams is the number of electrons. One electron in picture two, two electrons in picture one, and three electrons in picture three. The atom is represented by picture number one. We know this because, from thinking back to the start of the lesson, atoms are neutral. They have no overall charge and they have the same number of electrons and protons. So in this we have two protons, which they've colored green, and there are two electrons. So they would balance out, give a zero charge overall. The negative ion, to get a negative ion, you have to have lots of negative charge. So to get a negative ion, that would be uh, picture number three. Oops, can't type very well. Uh, because that has got an extra electron there. That makes it more negative. It's got three negative charges and only two positive ones. By that same token, a positive ion is where the uh, atom has an overall positive charge. So in picture two, we only have one negative and two positives. So picture two will show a positive ion. Okay, so in terms of creating ions, if you lose an electron from your outer shell, you become positive. If you were to gain one, that would make you negative. In this topic, we tend to look at positive ions. So that's what happens in a lot of the, a lot of the nuclear processes we look at. Those of you from, who do chemistry uh, and pay attention will realize that picture three has a little simplification in it. We've shown three electrons there, but of course, that first shell can only hold two. So that wouldn't work in a chemistry diagram. Again, I've just chosen this particular atom as it's got a small number of protons and is easier to draw. So definition then, atoms turn into positive ions if they lose one or more outer electrons. And this can happen for a variety of reasons. It can be to do with energy changes, it can do with absorption of energy, or the removal of that electron. So true and false then. Four questions. For each false answer, could you change a single word and make it true? Pause the video while you try it and check your own answers. So isotopes have different numbers of neutrons, not electrons. They have the same chemical properties as each other. They do have a different mass, that is correct. And ions are made by the removing or adding of electrons. Finally then, our applied to demonstrate questions. As usual, completely using class notebook and 
to check your answers, you can self-mark using this mark scheme on the next couple of slides. So which of those isotopes is not americium? So americium-241 is an isotope of americium. Notice here that the atomic number is shown on the bottom there, the smaller of the two. This is, of course, isotope B is not americium because americium has an atomic number of 95. And this clearly is not 95. So it cannot be americium. Atoms become ions when they lose an electron. To lose an electron makes you less negative and therefore you have a positive charge. So for this one, a simple bit of mathematical calculation, one sixth thousandth of the diameter of the atom is the diameter of the nucleus. So multiply, dividing that then, 0.18 divided by 6,000 gives us 0 0.000030 nanometers. We will allow, it's allowed in standard form as 3 by 10 to the minus 5 nanometers. And another blast from uh, lesson number one here. When electrons absorb EM radiation, they are promoted. So they move further from the nucleus and this electron would move into energy level A. Thank you very much for your attention during these lessons. As always, please remember to try out our other revision channels on Century Tech and Seneca and on Microsoft Teams. You've been a lovely audience and we'll see you soon. Thank you and goodbye.